Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Chinsey here back again for lecture three, which I'll try and keep to 15 minutes again on using uh, Open Studio with Honeybee. Um, the first two videos were um, pretty general overviews. This one's a general overview too, but it's the first time I'm going to focus on a particular component. And this time we're going to be talking about cooling with DX systems. So, um, you know, I think it's always a little bit of a, a bummer to have to put cooling in a building. Uh, and I'm not advocating that that's the reason we use this tool. I mean, I think we can all pretty much agree that, um, I mean, there's not a lot of rules really for passive design or for sustainable design in general, but I think that, you know, we use Honeybee and tools like it to try and identify proper orientation, ideal building shape, you know, to try and maximize things like passive solar and natural ventilation, uh, among a host of other things like uh, daylight and, you know, all those, all those sorts of things. But we may have to put in some type of mechanical system to provide uh, additional heating and cooling when the times are necessary. Uh, you know, maybe you, maybe the building is in a particularly hot place. Um, maybe we couldn't quite get the shape of the building right because of the site. Um, you know, it could be a host of reasons. <coughs> so we want to put in some type of system, but we want to make it as efficient as possible. Um, so DX coils, just so I give a brief overview here in case you don't know what DX coils are. Um, DX stands for direct expansion. Um, you know, and they're the kind of things that you probably ha have some familiarity seeing. Sometimes they're small um, and they serve spaces or zones typically, you know, at around a thousand square feet or a hundred square meters, which is what you would use these sort of units for. Um, sometimes they're referred to as packaged or split, but it doesn't really matter. Um, sometimes they're bigger too, so they might sit on the roof. Um, and in this case, they might serve a space, you know, 10 times as big. Um, and it's still DX equipment. Um, you might refer to them as PTAX or package rooftop. Those, those sometimes might be what you hear them called, or air-to-air -air heat pump, or PTHP, which stands for package terminal heat pump. Same idea. Um, but we're not talking about in this lecture um, VRVs or VRX, um, variable refrigerant volume or variable refrigerant flow. Those are those are DX units, but they're treated specially and differently. Um, so, so that'll be covered in a future lecture. Um, now, basically the concept, again, I know this is an overview for, and I apologize, but uh, it's worth just going over so people kind of know a little bit. Uh, the concept is that basically um, uh, warm air is being um, moved by a fan through the evaporator side and you can see cold air comes out and um, um, cold refrigerant goes through the tubes and it comes out as warmer refrigerant and the compressor heats up that refrigerant and then discharges it through the condenser and usually there's a fan here blowing air uh, over the warm condenser uh, over the warm refrigerant that's going through the condenser and then the process repeats itself the refrigerant gets cold and then it picks up heat as it goes through the evaporator as air is blowing across it and then the compressor um, gets the refrigerant ready to be um, rejected by the condenser so when we're talking dx coils and honeybee um, we're talking about basically we, we have inputs where we can affect the evaporator a little bit if you're an engineer you might think there's a lot of things you could do but there's not too much but just some basics we can also make changes to the compressor and we can also make changes to the condenser and all these other things that are in the system we actually don't we can't affect through the DX components 
in Honeybee. Um, this guy right here, the fan, we can affect, but it's a separate component. Okay. So let me uh, bring up my same model that I was using last time. And um, <clears throat> you can see actually that I've added a couple of components here. Okay. One, one really. And this is our DX coil. You can see it's not too clear. It says DX cooling. You can find it um, right here. And in the last video, I basically said once you put this on the page, you just need to provide a, a coil speed, which is either a zero or a one. So um, zero is one speed, one is two speed. Energy Plus actually offers speed, more speed control than this. But uh, Open Studio doesn't currently support more than two speeds, but you know that's a pretty good start. Uh, you also have to provide a unique name for it. Uh, the availability schedule, <coughs> you only have to provide a name of a schedule here. Um, and this has to be a name that's already available in Honeybee. Um, so, you know, if you uh, want to um, find all the schedules, you know, you can use a uh, well, that's probably not the best component. You probably want to use a component like this. And um, you can uh, search all the schedules and find them, find one that works for you. Um, I could probably give another tutorial on that if you're not familiar with that, or you can always um, you know, reach out to me with questions. But it has to be a valid name, basically or else uh, an error will be thrown and it, it won't be used. And then um, you'll see that uh, you've got um, high speed, right? A bunch of high speed settings and uh, low speed settings. And then you have a condenser type, um, an evaporative condenser. I, mean, I talked about being able to make changes to the condenser and that's how you do, that's what you do here. And then you've got two things, curves and unit and torque side pressure. These last two actually um, are not currently active, so if you put values in there, they're just going to be ignored. Um, curves would be great. I think engineers know why curves are important, but the the concept is is that every piece of equipment performs differently depending upon the temperatures that it's handling and how how hard it's working, basically. And so every every piece of equipment performs a little differently. Most people never change these curves. Um, it's something we'd like to do, but we haven't gotten to it yet. So the basic idea behind it, this is, um, you know, a couple things that I mentioned from last lecture. <coughs> um, we we define a, a system type using our Open Studio HVAC system list, which is um, this component right here, right? And um, We plug this. Uh, we plug the the output of this component into several different places. One, we plug it into our coordinator here, our air handle unit coordinator. We also plug it into our um, um, central plant coordinator, and then we finally plug that into our overall systems coordinator. And then the output of that we plug into Open Studio. And as I mentioned, um, if you put in, since all these things are connected. Um, the idea for doing this was to try and prevent um, the wrong configurations from showing up downstream and being pushed into Open Studio and throwing a bunch of errors. So we tried to catch all of them upstream and filter things out. So right now we're in a in a sort of a somewhat of an error state, and the reason is because um, we're using System Type Five, which normally requires a two-speed um, DX cooling coil, but you can see here that we only are using a one speed uh, DX coil at the moment. So if we change this to a, oh, well, we'll let that run. But you see, you see that actually had a good effect there. Um, so I'll just keep talking while this is running. Um, 
you, you might note you might note that um, we have entries for high speed and low speed. So what happens if you only select a one speed cooling coil? Well, basically, um, this component will only read or only pay attention to the high speed um, portions. Um, and all the low low speed ones will be ignored. So let me just um, let me just not run the simulations right now so that uh, I can show you what I mean. Sorry. So you can see right here that we have specified a, a low speed COP and a high speed COP. So if we change this to zero, um, you should see a message up here that says um, um, your low speed COP definition is ignored. Okay. <clears throat> and of course, down here, this is going to say, hey, your cooling coil, you know, has been converted to a two speed cooling coil because that's what the system type five expects. So when you look at um, what is coming out of this component um, right here it says you specified a single speed DX coil um, but that's not allowed so we're going to convert your definition to the honey speed honeybee default um, so you know there's some you want to make sure that you you have things set up properly um, when you're running these simulations um, you'll, you'll see that if I change this to a um, uh, a single speed. I might have to refresh this. You can see everything goes back to normal and everything's fine. Okay. Um, the other thing that you'll want to know about this component is that uh, you can also uh, make changes to the condenser type and uh, there's a there's a way in certain climates, especially in the in, in climates that are drier, it can be effective to use something called an evaporative condenser, where we spray water, um, we spray water um, on the condenser, and that helps to increase the efficiency of the system. And um, I'm going to change this back here, and I'm going to change this back. and uh, refresh our component. And um, to use the evaporative condenser, uh, you'll want to change the condenser type to one. Its default is zero, which means no evaporative condenser. And then we want to attach an evaporative condenser component to it, um, which we can find um, right here, OK? And all it really needs to get started is a unique name and a service type. And the service type is actually the same as the DX coil speed. So all you need to do is just plug this component in here. You'll see if I uh, disconnect it, it will not be happy about that. And everything downstream will not really know what you wanted to do. <coughs> and just like the um, just like the two speed DX coil, um, there's a high speed and low speed settings. Um, this is actually uh, quite well, um, quite well labeled. So uh, if you if you really want to know what all of these mean, um, you can feel free to um, to read through the uh, the args here. And um, you know, basically, um, the uh, the evaporative effectiveness is. Um, You know, we'll default to 0 0.9. Um, the high, the 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 evaporative condenser flow rate uh, is really rarely used, but you can change it. So it will blow 800 850 CFM per ton. Um, and some kind of esoteric uh, engineering data that engineers like. So again, if you choose a um, a one speed coil and your uh, system type is also one speed, so everything will run properly with all your settings. Um, 
it will just ignore all the low speed uh, settings just like it will do for the DX coil. So um, that's uh, that's pretty much the overview. Um, and uh, w once you're ready to run, you can just hit run simulation. And um, sometimes people ask me a couple other things, and I'll just go over this really quickly. So um, we're just talking about cooling coils here. So here's a little list for you. Um, systems one through five all use um, DX coils. Um, anything six or above uses chillers, so you don't need to worry about that. And here's a little guide for you. So anything one through four is going to be using a one speed, and anything five or above or five will use a two speed. Um, any of these can have evaporative condensers, but I think we know in practice it's pretty rare for especially system types one and two to use evaporative condensers. Well, uh, that's it for now. Um, hope you enjoyed this and uh, good luck and as always, um, happy modeling.